Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be, whether you're across the nation or around the world. My name is Shane Squark, and on behalf of the CMT Association, I'm pleased to welcome you back to another great webcast as part of our educational web series. Today, on October, what is today's date? October 18th, 2023, I'm pleased to welcome John Rowland to the program to present The Cycle of Price and the Fractal Nature of Candlestick Patterns. Uh, I want to kind of move away from my bio, but I really want to talk about is to start our presentation is, you know, those who have influenced me and those who have kind of influenced how I look at the market. And, you know, there's a lot of them that I can, I can um, point out, you know, for instance, Hamilton in this, you know, in this discussion of, you know, primary and um, uh, secondary and, and minor trends, um, you know, McGee and Ed, uh, Edwards and McGee who introduced, you know, the recognition of these different types of price patterns, um, you know, and then Kirkpatrick and Dulcus who kind of introduced this idea of supply and demand, you know, that these imbalances that create are created in our charts between our buyers and sellers. And again, an advancement of a lot of other uh, technical analysis. Hearst with his cycle theories and Elliot with his wave theory that, you know, that, um, uh, motive wave, uh, corrective waves, impulse corrections. Uh, this is going to be part of my process as well. And then uh, nice and with the Japanese candlesticks. And then what I loved about his ideas was that, you know, Japanese candlesticks, you know, represent this visualization of this battle between buyers and sellers. And for me, that really, really hit hit home and you know what did he say right it's kind of this set sentiment um, bias and then um uh, mendelbot and his fractal geometry where mendelbot goes about and says that th there is patterns in roughness or in randomness and so you know he kind of disputes technical analysis so it's really kind of this blend of what mendelbot is saying and then bringing back in technical analysis so what are all these guys are trying to do or what are these great scholars trying to do and i think what we can agree on is that they're trying to discover does past price information have a predictive value and that's what i'm going to try to present today is i think that there is something out there that can give us a predictive value as um, traders and investors so just a reminder again, um, you know, the, today's session is for educational purposes. I am not a, a qualified financial advisor, and certainly there's risk in anything you do in buying, sell, or hold uh, securities, commodities, or any other investments. And I'm here on permission of barchart.com, and so under no circumstances shall we be liable for any loss or damages that occur based on any investment activity that you do based on the information you receive through barchart.com or myself okay that's a little so what are we talking about we're talking about the cycle of price and what i've done here is i've kind of combined two major theories and when the first theory comes from mendelbot which basically is saying that you understand financial markets you need to understand these fractal patterns that in these complex markets you know he basically went on to say something like only fractals succeed in capturing the um, reality of markets. And so if you're not familiar with fractals, so here's just a couple of definitions. You know, it's a mathematical set or phenomenon that exhibits a repeating pattern at every scale. And if that pattern is duplicate on all those scales, it's called self-simulation. Uh, there's something called fractal dimension, and that is just as you change the scale, the, com the complexity of the patterns will change on a ratio to the scale that you are looking at. And what we're going to look at is something called fractal recognition. This is awareness that there's this fractal dimension throughout multiple time frames. And there's a sequence to this fractal dimension. And also how do the market reacts when we synchronize or we interact uh, with these different fractal patterns uh, through all our time frames. So here's what kind of what Mendelbaum was saying is like, here's a, a screenshot that I took a couple weeks ago. Um, this is the S&P 
And what, we're, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at four different time frames and four different time scales, you know, data fields. And yet we see that the pattern of price, right, is very similar. And this is kind of what Mendel was saying, that there's this fractal relationship, regardless of the scale and the time frame that we see that resonates through all markets. And so we're going to take that idea and then we're going to blend it with this idea of supply and demand. Basically, you know, what Kirkpatrick and Dahlquist introduced us to is that theory that there's these imbalances between buyers and sellers and that these imbalances create these levels of support and resistance. Now, a supply zone is, you know, basically there's more sell orders than there are buy orders, and that's why price falls, and the demand zone is the opposite. But what we're going to look at is that these zones can be found in all time frames, and that candlestick formations, more of the classic candlestick formations, are evidence of these imbalances between buyers and sellers. Again, remember what uh, Nyson said, this sentiment bias. So what are these uh fractal patterns that we're going to look at inside of our markets. So price moves in four fractal phases, and those four phases are rally-based drops, and this is where price is rising and then falls. A drop-based drops, that's where price is just falling. Uh, drop-based rallies, that's where price is rising, excuse me, falling and then rises, and then rally-based rallies, that's where price is rising. So there's two takeaways I want you to take from this. First of all, when we look at current markets and we look at candlesticks, I don't want you to get caught up on classic candlesticks, right? Or the color of the candle or the formation of the candles at one candle or a group of candles. I just want you to concentrate on the results of the price action that we're going to be looking at based on these fractal formations. In a rally-based drop, what we see is prices goes up and then it goes down. And drop-based drop, price goes down, right? The result, the drop-based rally, price drops and then rallies. In rally-based rallies, price is rally, rally. And then the second takeaway is think about uh, trend analysis, right? So when we think about trend analysis, let's say, how do we define an uptrend? Well, an uptrend is defined by what higher highs and higher lows. So if we think about that in our fractal nature, then our higher lows are our drop base rallies. And as long as the market is making higher drop base rallies, then we can define that we're in an uptrend. But we know the market doesn't go in one direction. So in an uptrend, we do have impulses and then corrections. And so that higher high is our rally base drop. Now, what we're going to discover when we look at some live market examples is that in dominant uptrends, how do we get from the low to the high? How do we get from that higher low to that higher high? Well, we have that impulse, right? That impulse that carries us, that rally base rally. And then that correction would be that drop base drop. But what we'll discover is that in very dominant uh, uptrends and dominant downtrends, we might see multiple rally base rallies before we get a drop base, excuse me, a rally base drop. Or on downtrends, we might see multiple down, uh, down price movements of fractals, these drop base drops before we get our drop base rally. So we'll look at that example in a moment. But let me show you kind of some pictures of what these fractals look like on, let's say, a textbook level, although there's no textbook. And we'll go through that. But just remember that what I'm trying to talk to you about here is that who's in control and what are these candlesticks representing, right? And these candlesticks, these fractal formations are confirming who's in control or who has taken over a change of control. And again, you know, all candlestick formations, those classic candlestick formations, will fall into one or more of these um, phases. So a drop base rally, again, the result, uh, price falls and then rallies. And then here are some examples of some classic candlestick formations you might be familiar with. Again, I don't want you to worry about uh, 
the exact candlestick formation I, or the symmetry or even the color of the candles. I just want you to understand the results of what price is doing, in this case, falling and then rising. Rally base rally, right? Our result, our price is rallying. Uh, then a rally base drop, price goes up, then it goes down, right? A reversal in price action. And again, there are some of your classic candlestick formations you might be familiar with. And then a drop base drop, right? The result is price is moving uh, from left to right to the down side. Okay, so there's this sequinality to this fractal process. And so what we see is that drop base rallies, and there's a drop base rally, lead to rally base rallies. And rally base rallies lead to rally base drops. And rally base drops lead to drop base drops. And drop base drops lead to drop base rallies and this is the cycle of price now what was really nice the chart gods helped me out uh yesterday and this is a 30 minute time frame of the s p and what we'll discover like when mendel says is there's a lot of roughness in this messiness to this fractal recognition but it gave me a really nice example here and so let's look at that so here's the previous days, 30 minutes before the close, and the market opened lower. It price dropped, based, and then rallied. And then after a drop base rally, we have rally base rallies. And rally base rallies lead to rally base drops. And rally base drops lead to drop base drops and drop base drops lead to drop base rallies and so in one day we saw a 30 minute time frame where we literally cycled through the cycle of price now today we start a new cycle in the 30 minute time frame and the market dropped base a little little candles here and it looks like it's trying to base rally but it could base here and go lower. And we'll maybe we'll come back to uh, the S and P later. But I just want to kind of show you that. Notice that the candles here, it's not the color of the candles. Although rallying here, they are all green, and falling here, they're all red. But you know, outside of our classic candlestick formations, the only one that maybe you might recognize is our uh, bearish engulfing pattern here. So let's move away from that, and let's kind of go to. Uh, a, a more active market well not a more active market but a market that you know is actively traded and so this is what we're going to do we're going to start with our fractal recognitions at some at a, some type of a higher time frame so my analysis i usually work weeklies dailies and then some kind of intraday time frame so if i do a weekly of apple here and again let's not think about looking at this market in terms of trends and other you know classical uh technical analysis let's kind of just look at this and from the idea of this you know these fractal formations in terms of the cycle of price so you know let's kind of work backwards and so here you know here where do we see right what fractal is that well that's a rally based drop and then again multiple drop base drops drop base drops price is falling and again this one might be a little bit difficult to see yeah there might be a little small little cycle in here maybe at a lower time frame but what was the result well price fell into this area and then it fell out of it so another drop base drop, which led to a drop base rally. Again, rally base rally, rally base rallies. And so we got to a rally base drop and then drop base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally. Again, another maybe a little smaller cycle at a lower time frame, but rally base drop, drop base rallies, rally base drops, drop base drops, drop base rally. And then again, we can see a very dominant uptrend where we see multiple rally base rallies 
rally base rallies until eventually we come to the end of that cycle which would be a rally based drop now one of the things about the cycle of price is there is some predictability to it in other words as long as we know where we are in the cycle and as we move through each fractal we can anticipate prices are going to move in that direction but um, it doesn't help us in terms of length or amplitude but supply and demand what we're going to look at as we build on this idea will help us to use for targeting and also for risk management but let's look at again let's look at this little rally here so like i said you know maybe inside of here we had a small little cycle again if you think about trend analysis what are we here we just got a impulse up made a new high we have a higher low right and a correction and then again on our way to make higher highs now currently where are we on um our cycle of price well you know again we see Rally base drops, drop base drops, drop base rallies, rally base drops, drop base drops, drop base rallies. And right now we're kind of in between. We don't know where at this time frame we're going to go. Are we going to rally base rally up or are we going to drop base drop down? And we're on a weekly time frame, so we might take us a week or two before we discover that. But what's our trend or what do we see in terms of our cycle of price well we're seeing lower highs or you know lower rally base drops so that is certainly a sign of sellers are in control and we're making lower lows again another sign of uh, a downtrend if i go to a, a lower time frame now i'm going to a daily time frame again now notice there is those cycles of price but let's step back and look at that circle that i identified before that correction wave and there you can see it that rally base rally rally base drop a very small drop base drop here price drops found support and again in classical charting formation what why did the market hold here why did it make a drop base rally here well it came and filled this gap and not only this gap but this gap that was the breakout of where we broke out from a previous range. So that's kind of classical uh, technical analysis. Now look at, uh, again, uh, this cycle wave of rally based drops and drop based rallies with our little minor waves inside. But what do we do? We're just making higher highs and higher lows as we go higher into our price cycle. Now, as of recent, right, what are we seeing? Well, we see our price cycle is getting uh, the waves are getting smaller in amplitude, and they're coming faster and faster. So this is a sign that the market is probably doing one of two things. It's either uh, consolidating, um, you know, it's coiling, um, and it's waiting uh, for some kind of energy to make a large uh, move. Also, when we see multiple cycles that contract is also an indication of that we might be in a transition from one trend to another trend. So some of you might be familiar with, you know, change of character, break of structure. So what are we seeing here in the last uh, wave here? So here's our rally base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally, rally base rally. And we rally base rally and this is where supply and demand starts to come in so we did violate an area of supply where we know that there's more probably was more sellers but in pure candlestick formations or candlestick theory you know a gap is what they call an open window and that can act as a level of support so maybe we discount that a little bit but it is the fact that we did rally base rally past here could be an, a change of character and on our correction here right now i use uh, open to close candles if you're not familiar instead of those some traders who might use a close to close so my candles represent the price action of that period 
So even though the market is prices falling, the pressure on it on a daily basis is to the upside. So we're seeing that change of character and that price now has held this rally base rally. So we're seeing that change of character also in the fractals. So what could we anticipate? Well, we could anticipate a change in our trend that this drop, this pause here now will become a drop base rally and then rally base rallies. But we want then to take out the structure, that break of structure. So we probably need to see both the drop base rally fractal and then the rally base rally as that confirmation. Or price pauses here and then we uh, continue on a drop base drop until we find a greater uh, support. Now, if I go to a lower time frame, you know, again, we talked about cycle of price in terms of, you know, the amplitude and the duration or the frequency. And you can see here, if we think about uh, trend analysis and uh, supply and demand, but our cycles are getting very, very uh, short. But notice that every rally is respecting supply. Every rally is respecting supply. Every rally is um, respecting levels of where we believe that there are sellers. And what it's not respecting is demand zones or areas where we believe that there are buyers that should be holding the market until just recently, right? Until just recently. And so this could be that change of character in Apple. Again, we need to wait for time until our next set of fractals are created in all these time frames to make that decision. Again, if I'm thinking about risk management, if I'm looking for a buying opportunity, maybe I wait for us to break this level of supply on a rally based rally and I can use this low as uh, my risk. What's my target? Well, then I have to respect the supply uh, for targeting, but the first really good supply zone that I see in terms of a rally would be back up here. And so then you could do that risk reward analysis at this lower time frame. But again, as I move through higher time frames, I could see much greater rewards or even greater risk. All right, so that's an equities. We're going to go back to equities in a second, but the real idea of supply and demand, as far as I'm concerned, and this cycle of price, because of my background, comes out of the futures in Forex. And there's some benefits that you might see in terms of cycle of, cycle of price, in terms of looking at uh, Forex and futures and contracts. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. But it really comes down to is that they're just they, they trade for longer periods of times in terms of day, right? So the equities market, the stock market is only open up for six and a half hours. And, you know, most commodities or a certain amount of them uh, trade about 23 hours a day and Forex trades 24 hours a day. But again, let's just kind of go back and look at our chart from the lens of the cycle of price. And... So we'll, I'll talk about these purple lines in a moment. But, you know, what do we see here? We have a large area where price rallied up, paused, and then uh, fell away. In other words, a rally base drop. Again, is this a classic candlestick formation? No, but it is a fractal, right? It is a fractal. And then drop base drop, right? A little drop base rally, a little, little rally base rally here. Rally base drop, drop base drop. Drop base rally, rally base rally, rally base drop, drop base drop, right? And then again, not your classic candlestick pattern, but drop base rally. Now, in this downtrend, what do we see? Every time the market rallied, right, that correction phase, it respected supply, drop base drop. Every time the market rallied, it respected supply drop base drop every time the market rallied it respected supply drop base drop and it's only after we have a change in character and also a break of structure that we started a new uptrend rally base rally and there we violated supply we violated it paused 
but we violated supply. We violated the supply. So now we have a new uptrend. And then we come to a level where we find a rally base drop, like peak high or our new higher high. And then we have a correction phase. And our correction phase respects our rally base rally, our impulse of where we broke out from the change in our trend. Now, moving forward, you know, again, this is on a weekly time frame. Again, here's our messy rally base drop. Here's a messy drop base drop. Here's a kind of a three candle drop base rally, a little rally base rally, rally base drop. And again, what are we seeing with our cycle here? Our cycles are getting um, condensed and our amplitudes are getting smaller. That's a sign that we might be seeing a breakout coming or a change in trend. Um, and what did we get? We did get this big breakout, big breakout, one big giant candle here. And But what fractal did we create? A drop base rally and a drop base rally that respects our last and significant uh, demand zone. And then price rallies up. So what's our next fractal? Well, we'll be rally base rally. Now, what's just kind of cool is I set this up yesterday, and I wish I could have done this yesterday, but as of yesterday, this weekly candle was actually below this purple line, and it was a red candle. And it was kind of basing for a moment, but now we've got that kind of that breakthrough in our a weekly chart. So let me go to a lower time frame. And here's our daily chart. Again, there is that cycle of price, that rally base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally, and rally base rally. And then that's where we were basing yesterday. We were basing in here, and you know, we were we were respecting supply at the moment. But what's our next fractal after a drop base rally, rally base rally, and another rally base rally? So now the market is confirming to us that we are in an uptrend. It has currently respected this level of supply, which means that we might see a potential correction, or we can base over the next day or two, and then what? Rally base rally up into the next significant layer of supply which in this case for the gold market would be around that psychological level of 2000. But again, if I look at our weekly time frame, it is a fractal. There it is, rally base drop. So we could go to a lower time frame and tell to give us some kind of clues what we anticipate might happen today or over the next couple days. And this is what was happening yesterday. We were trading in this basing range these two purple lines from our daily candle and but what were we seeing right our cycles are getting short we're anticipating something to happen but we're making higher lows and we finally got that breakout and now we've rally based rallied out but then we did make a rally base drop and in candlestick formations most of you should be familiar with, with this one, right? This is that bearish engulfing. So at this point, the lower time frame is telling us that maybe we're in beginning the part of a corrective phase or where price needs to pause before we can rally base rally out of our higher time frame fractals. So we could base here, drop back, find support and it does look like we did that earlier this morning and uh, then we can rally base rally out or maybe drop base drop down but at this point right our trend is higher in our longer term time frame our intermediate time frame and what we're looking here at the lower time frame is maybe this is just the correction of uh, a continuation of an uptrend so what i said was um, that there is this difference between the candle fractals uh, a little bit uh, between futures and Forex versus uh, equities. So if you think about equities in gold, you know, you got the GLD, which is the ETF of gold. And it, you know, it mimics gold. And 
right? Notice again, this is very sloppy or very difficult to read that fractal notion, right? And why is that? Well, that's because, you know, in the equities markets, we're only open for six and a half hours a day. So we don't get these really nice, complete candles. But don't worry about this. The general rule here is that look at gaps, right? Look at these gaps as large body candles. And if you do that, right, and you think about these gaps in terms of large body candles, then our fractals become very uh, apparent, right? Rally base drop, drop base drop, drop base rally, rally base rally, rally base rally. And again, what do we see at this time frame on um, this ETF? Right, we've rally base rallied out, we broke structure, and we could pause rally base drop. But I think what we saw with gold is we're probably going to pause here, rally base rally, and then find some type of supply over here. Now it does look like a 182, we are respecting this level of supply. So what if we wanted to jump on this long trend, we either wait for that correction or we wait for that breakout on a rally base rally that violates this most recent supply. So here's the Euro and you know Euros is uh, you know, this Forex is a 24-hour market. And so this is the point I'm trying to make is, you know, very easy to see our fractals here, right? Very complete candles. This is a weekly chart of the euro US dollar. And what do we see in this downtrend, right? We see a preponderance of multiple drop base drops, drop base drops, drop base drop, drop base drops, a confirmation that we're in a downtrend. And that every time we get a correction in the market, the market creates a fractal, a rally base drop that respects the former supply zone, the former drop base drop, right? Respects, drops down, price rallies, respects. And then finally, we get that drop base rally. Now, why in this case, you know, we look at the length of this trend. Why in the case would this drop base rally lead for another rally base rally out? Now, whoops. Well, maybe, and maybe it's because the cycle of price continue to reach out and try to find some kind of demand some kind of buyers and notice that this rally excuse me drop base rally in terms of this market was a rally base rally where price bottomed and this, we're talking about a long-term fractal here Right, a drop base rally, a big giant one, right? And this was the first demand zone that hadn't been tested in a long time. Notice all these little demand zones, right? With this one tested here, this price action here tested this little demand zone. And it was not until we got to this demand zone that hadn't been tested in what almost 20 years. That's pretty impressive in terms of fractal recognition at the grand scale. All right, so let me see what we're at. Um, let's do this. Let's go back to our slides for a second. So I know a lot of you here might be, you know, maybe just starting to get into the CMT or starting to uh, learn that process and there might be some of us are are uh, very experienced and i know there's a lot of folks that like process and uh, steps and disciplines so let me kind of go through those with you in terms of uh, cycle of price analysis so cycle of price analysis is really a, this multiple time frame analysis you know you can call it whatever you want and this does come from 
you know, other um, methodology, for instance, you know, maybe somebody like um, elders, um, uh, what do they, what do you call that? Um, not multiple time from triple, triple screening. Where we use that higher time frame to identify our primary trend, right, our longer term trend, then we drop down to that intermediate time frame to discover the strength of that trend. Well, what do I mean by this, right? So if I'm in a higher time frame trend and I'm in that cycle of price where I've just gone from drop base rally, well, if that's a strong drop base rally, then my lower, my intermediate time frame is probably already moved on. It's probably in the rally base rally cycle. So that would be a strength. If I'm at a rally based rally in a higher time frame or getting at the end of a price movement, and maybe the intermediate has now gone to a rally based drop, maybe I'm into that corrective phase, like discovering the strength and weakness. And then uh, using the lower time frames to help us find better ideal entries and exits based on those supply and demand zones that are being created in concert with our fractal formations but this is really what we want to do with chart analysis cycle price chart analysis this this recognition of price patterns our supply and demand areas and that fractal recognition throughout all of our time frames so the steps here would be start in a higher time frame look at current price identify a primary trend, and where are we in that phase of our cycle of price? We're going to draw two uh, zones, and they're going to be based on our fractal patterns. And preferably, we want to find uh, one of each of the phases. In other words, we want to find a drop-based drop and a rally-based drop and a rally-based rally and a and a drop base rally. But if we're in a strong uptrend, you know, maybe just that first rally base rally is good enough on the downside. And then we're going to check for those recognizable candles, but those more classic candlestick patterns. We'll drop down to that intermediate time frame, that secondary trend, right? And where are we in that cycle of price, right? Where are we in that? Uh, process. Again, we're going to draw the most recent fractal, but we're only going to do one here. We're going to draw the fractals, right? The the one that we anticipate the market is going to go to or a test and the one that has just recently um, uh, been created. And then we're going to check for that similarity between our intermediate, our secondary trend fractal, and our higher time frame fractal. And then we'll drop down those lower time frames. We'll look at those supply and demand zones that were created based by those fractal formations in our secondary trend. And how do they line up with our cycle of price? Now, a lot of times what we'll discover is in the lower time frame, we might get a contra cycle of price. In other words, if I have a strong uptrend or I'm doing this analysis and I'm looking at a weekly and my weekly has now gone from drop base rally and maybe looking to move into rally base rally and my secondary is in rally base rally, right? That impulse phase of our uptrend. Well, I might be at a lower time frame looking for that drop base rally, right? That end of that correction, right? A drop base rally in one of our rally base rally zones or our drop base rally zones in our intermediate or higher time frames. In other words, I might be looking at a contra cycle of price at a lower time frame to give me an optimum entry into a higher time frame trend. Or I'm waiting for that lower time frame price action to confirm what I've already discovered in my higher time frames. In other words, I'm waiting for the lower time frame to rally base rally out of a range of price where we break structure. And the structure that we want to break would be that intermediate or secondary fractal pattern 
that drop base drop where price comes up, tests it, and violates it. So, again, and think about classic um, technical analysis, right? We're either buying the dip on the correction or we're buying the impulse on the breakout based on the fractals that we see at our higher time frames and the price action that we see at the lowest time frame. Okay. Uh, I see a couple of questions changing that went through, but so let me just do takeaways first and then we'll do questions. So I, I am kind of right at that time where we want to give some time for questions. So here's come some takeaways for you is think of the cycle of price as reading the title chart. Again, you know, right, Hamilton in his discussion of the Dow theory, right? The you know, where is high tide, right? Where is low tide? Where is our our cycle of price? Where are we in that cycle of price? Where is that high point, right? Where is that rally base drop where's that drop base rally and are we where are we in that trend are we in the corrective phase tide rolling out or are we you know are we at the strength of the trend the tide is rolling in you know and, and what is the velocity of the waves right that the magnitude and um the duration right are these waves or are they just ripples the higher the time frame you start your analysis, you know, the greater the probability of your trend. Higher time frames can influence lower time frames. We saw that in the example of the euro dollar, but also lower time frames can be the first to signal changes in our higher time frames. We saw that in the example of Apple and gold. And recognizing that this confluence of trends in the cycle of price our candlestick formations, our classic candlestick formations, and this fractal recognition through multiple time frame, we want to kind of stack those all together. And that increases the probability of our outcome. Okay. All right, Shane, let's uh, attack some questions here, all right? So the first question I get is, do patterns have a fixed length? No, they do not. This is the randomness that Mendelbot was uh, discussing. Right? There is no fixed, well, fixed pattern. Now, what I will show you, let's go back to, um, you know, let's go back to, well, so let's, first of all, let's go back to gold for a second here. And let's move away from the GLG. Let's go to the, um, you know, you can start using some of our more classic uh, technical analysis to help us enhance our fractal recognition. So, for instance, like on gold here, you know, I don't know how far price is going to fall when it broke out of this range. I don't know how far this drop base drop is going to go. But there are tools that I have in my technical analysis toolbox and one of them in terms of probability of price movement is something called Bollinger Bands, right? Based on standard deviations. So look at on the weekly here, what happened? Our drop base rally was a Bollinger Band piercing outside of our Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Band tell, tells us that once price moves inside of the Bollinger Bands, there's a higher probability that we're going to revert back to the mean. Well, did we revert back to the mean? Yeah. But what did we do? We created those two fractals in concert with our technical analysis. So, yeah, you can't use uh, fractals to help us determine the length or the amplitude, but this is where we can kind of use our other technical toolkits to help us decide how far price has traveled in a period of time or you know, to help us to indicate is this – a change in character is this right if you think about macd crossovers um you know those are usually found in drop base rallies and rally base drops your uh negative and on positive diversions from your uh, stochastics and macds and rsis um excuse me not macds uh, and rsis you know those are usually the first rally base rally after um you know a drop base rally or they're those signals line up with your first rally base, excuse me, drop base drop after a rally base drop. 
So the, they do work in concert with our fractal recognition. All right, somebody wants to look at the $10 uh, dollar and drop base value well, seems likely to resolve itself soon. Thank you. All right, so let's go to futures, uh, finance. And so I'm just going to use the regular 10-year note, not the ultra. So I'm guessing that's what the individual is asking. I'll go to the chart. Um, so you didn't mention, oh, on the weekly, in terms of the weekly. Very good. Excellent. Good job. <laughs> uh, let me just change my chart here. Let's just do, do charts. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right. I think, you, you know, again, we are certainly in that drop base drop cycle, right? Right. There are some corrective waves here. Is the market respecting supply? It certainly looks like that. And we have broken down. Now, what could we do in terms of has price fallen too far or the length of this uh, trend? Now, I'm using a, uh, so this is daily. Let's, let's go to the weekly. Um, the daily chart was contract specific. So this weekly is a continuous chart. Um, so what I could do is, yeah, look at that fractal. There it is, drop, base, drop. So what I could do is now, let's do this. Let's go back in time. And I've done this one because I am, full disclosure, I am short notes. Um, well, I'm short the TLT. But, you know, it looks like we've just broken out of this rally base rally. So we have to kind of go back in time a little bit here. Now, you know, objectively, let's see what we got here. Objectively, we're probably going to fall all the way back to this drop base rally or the origin of this big giant move that goes all the way back to the GFC. So let me just bring this purple line down to about there. Now, there does look like there's a little bit of a rally base rally here um, that we could work on. So, you know, let's kind of draw that one. I'm going to be a little conservative on that one. I'm going to go a little bit on the low side on that one. And then let's go back and see where we are current price. So, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're right on top of those zones. So, you know, could we see a drop base rally be created you know, on a weekly basis over the next two weeks? Maybe, but it certainly looks like, right, below there, you know, maybe if we go right below there, we, you know, what does that put you in? 105, 103, 26. So, I mean, it's still room to run here, but as a trader, I'd be a little bit cautious. I think maybe we've probably gone a little too far too fast. And we're certainly on a fractal basis at a very large mega time frame. We are coming into probably the last support level we've seen in a long time. And we're going back, what, uh, to the GFC. Okay. Is it better to make trend line based on time frames and see if price action is breaking out of consolidation, demand zone supply? If yes, how many trend lines based on different time frames should there be in a chart for a swing trading viewpoint? So let me think about this for a second. I I, I kind of want to stay in the secondary as my my what I what I would call my trend of decision or my trend of action, right? That's that's kind of that momentum. So maybe I would only be drawing trend lines in terms of the secondary trend, for instance, in this case, right? A very well-defined trend line. And you could, you could do channels and stuff like that. What I would do is if I started breaking structure or breaking a I have a change in character that maybe came in a lower time frame or even at this time frame then what I would do is look at a trend line at a higher time frame to see if there's room for the market to run or is that trend line that we're seeing on the 
the intermediate or the secondary trend line is very similar that we see um, in uh, the uh, higher time frame. So I kind of would be staying in the intermediate or secondary trend time frame until um, we get that fractal confirmation, until we get that fractal confirmation that we have broken that trend line. And then I'll maybe go to that higher time frame look at supply and demand zones, and also look at those trend lines. And those might be my targets, right? I might be waiting for the market to make a big move, but maybe that big move in terms of that trend line might be much farther away. So the question is, are you using rally-based rallies as support or the drop-based rallies as support? I will both. Uh, again, in a downtrending market, what you might find is that a drop-based rally will be a support level for a time being until the market breaks it down. But in an uptrending market, let's go to an uh, example of an uptrending market that we just recently had. Um, I think uh, not many uptrending markets recently, but the gold would be a good example of that. I think. Again, let me just get rid of my chart here. And let's go to a daily nearby. This is just going to give me a little bit of a cleaner chart, although when I do my technical analysis, um, I tend to use in futures, I tend to use a contract specific. So again, here's that curve, right? That impulse, we broke out of a range, right? Here's a drop base rally, rally base rally, right? Again, little, little cycles in here, but right. What's the result? Rally base rally, right? There's that impulse, right? Where's our correction, our correction, came back to our rally base rally. So in a healthy uptrend, rally base rallies, especially rally base rallies that break structure should hold. If we're in a market of transition, then what we will discover is that usually the rally base rallies or the drop base drops don't hold and then the market returns to the origin of that price movement. So that's a good time to bring up this one. And here's um IWM. Again, let's just look at this in terms of a classic technical analysis, right? Head and shoulders. I mean, we can now all can see this was uh, from a, a recent um, webinar I did for bar chart, right? Here's that rally base rally that broke out of an area of consolidation. And after the correction, where did market find support? The rally base rally on the way back up right we respected supply but then price came back down well it came back and held that uh, a drop base rally here we see a rally base rally that we broke out impulse and then after our rally base drop what did the market do it paused at this rally base rally filled filled that gap pause there but then violated it. So that would have been an indication to us that this trend is over and a new trend was being created because we're making the new fractal that is violating the old fractal in that cycle. And then price fell, right, again, to our drop base rally. But when price rallied, right, where did it turn? It turned in that battle zone where we transition from an uptrend uh, to a downtrend, that drop base drop. So in a downtrend, drop base drops tend to have greater strength. And then now again, look what in classical technical analysis, we break the neckline, right? Well, we want that confirmation. Well, here the fractal gave us that confirmation. We broke the neckline. As we broke that neckline, we created a drop base drop so i think that answers your questions um 
What books would you recommend as a must-have for our technical libraries? Learn more about uh, Market Profile. Well, Market Profile is Stoudemire, so I would, I would re read his book. Um, you know, I, I think any of the books that are in the CM, uh, CMT recommended library as, you, as you're going through the course, there's a lot of books that are in there. Um, if you can look behind me, I have a lot of them in uh, in my library as well. Um, so, you know, I would, I would trust the, those ones. It, there's no real books on this cycle of price. This is kind of something of my design. I have, you know, other mentors that kind of use this. I don't, I don't know of somebody who has written a book on this particular, um, technical analysis. All right. So I think I answered oh, one more here. Oh, so here's a question about uh, measuring amplitude. So he, let's go back to that. Again, where we can uh, use our classic technical analysis um, to help us with amplitudes. All right. So here's that, that you know, going back to that S&P, where I started our conversation today, where we, you know, are very well-defined and, you know, now after you've seen uh, equities and you can see how messy they can be, but how beautiful this really was. But let's look at this in terms of this amplitude, right? So the low was around 323, uh, 432.60, and the high is um, 438. So that's a value of about what? Five and a half points, five and a half points, right? Okay, so is there a technical analysis tool that we have that can tell us that what is the probable range of price on any given day? And I'll give you that time to think about that, and that's called average true range. And look at our average true range of the S&P, the SPY, was in that 510 to 550 area. So it's not a precise science, but you will see these intraday cycles that will conform uh, to your daily uh, ATR. So there's a tool that you can use in helping to define intraday uh, cycles. Okay. Uh, where can you follow me on social media? Well, I'm not on social media. You can, we do have a bar chart has their uh, a Twitter account. Um, gives a good point but where you can find me is here i'm in my barchart.com account and on wednesdays i do uh, uh, live webinars not one this week and in those webinars i talk about uh, trading ideas and concepts um, a lot of them right out of the playbook of the cmt i give my own personal spin on how to use them and then I show you the tools and features that are on bar chart to help you employ uh, those strategies. And so the, one of the reasons why I just did was head and shoulders, but you can see that, you know, it's a wide range of topics. So you can find me there. And if you are a bar chart member, and by the way, you can, uh, this is my shameless plug, Shane, <laughs> is uh, you can try out our services for 30 days for free. And on Fridays, we have a more intimate show that we look at the macro environment and then we look for trading opportunities and then we look at uh, how Bar Chart can help you with to find those opportunities. So, yeah, I'm not a big social media person. Um, if you want to contact me, if you have any other questions about today's session, uh, Shane, if you wouldn't mind putting it in the chat, you can uh, contact me at uh, john.roland at barchart.com or, um, you know, you might get a quicker response from me if you use market on close at barchart.com. So those are two ways that you can uh, contact me. Okay.